So in this slide, we want to take the equation we got before for the energy stored in an inductor. Here we wrote it in terms of the inductance and the current. There's another way to write down the energy in terms of the magnetic field. And this goes with the same <coughs> idea that we did in capacitors. We wrote down the energy in terms of the charge or the capacitance and the potential difference. But then we are also able to write down the energy in a capacitor in terms of the electric field. So let's see how we can do that. So let's take a solenoid, and we know the inductance of a solenoid, and we know the magnetic field inside the solenoid, and we substitute into the inductance L, and for I squared, it's just B squared over mu naught squared N squared. So this is just a direct substitution of what the inductance is and the current squared R for an so ideal solenoid. Now, if you cancel things, you'll see the n squared will cancel with the n squared, and one of the mu nodes will cancel with one of the mu nodes. You end with this result. A times d is the volume of the inductor. And so you can write down this as b squared over 2 mu node times the volume. So the energy, the total energy in the solenoid, is b squared over 2 mu node times the volume of the solenoid. So we can take this equation for the total energy and we can then define something called the energy density, the energy per unit volume. If you take the total energy in the solenoid and you divide by the total volume, this gives you the energy density, the energy per unit volume. And this, this turns out to be b squared over 2 mu naught. So that means you can think about it in every, any region of space where there's a magnetic field, there's some energy density stored there in that region. And this is in general true for any kind of situation. And this, go, this is very similar to the case we did for capacitors, where we, where we define the energy density in the electric field inside a capacitor. 